Hi, um, I work on anti-censorship at Tor, and a lot of the stuff I'll be talking about is the hard work of many people, um, including my colleague Philip, uh, other people at Tor, many of whom you've heard from today, and also a very large, large network of volunteers. Um, so to start, I want to give a shout out to our volunteers, uh, the people who run our anti-censorship infrastructure. We've added a lot of new bridges over the last year, including some default bridges, which are the first line of anti-censorship for many people who use Tor. These bridges ship with Tor browser, and so they reach tens of thousands of users and have very high reliability and throughput requirements. So we're very grateful for this um, uh, capacity that our volunteer and community members have added to the network. Um, further, to ease the setup and running of bridges, we have improved our setup guides that we offer for a variety of different platforms. And also new, we've added instructions for deploying bridges using Docker. So if you're new to volunteering and you want to run a bridge but you haven't yet, this is a very good place to start and you can find all of our setup guides online. Uh, to get Tor Browser into the hands of people in places where our download page is blocked, we also have a tool called GetTor that distributes Tor Browser binaries. And we've introduced a bunch of fixes to GetTor over the last year. We've also added some new features, including allowing users to request Tor Browser in specific locales. And we've also worked on a UX overhaul of GetTor email and signature verification instructions to help users quickly and safely start using Tor Browser. Um, in some scenarios, our default bridges are blocked and users have to request additional bridges in order to connect to the Tor network. And the longstanding tool that we've had to do this is called BridgeDB. Um, so our goal over the last year was not only to maintain and provide some fixes and enhance the usability of BridgeDB, but we also wanted to learn more about its effectiveness. And in order to do so, we extended our safe collection of metrics and through this, we were able to learn a lot about how not only users interact with Tor uh, with BridgeDB to get bridges, but also how sensors learn about and block our bridges. Uh, this additional information has been very useful in the beginning of designing and implementing a successor to BridgeDB uh, that has a lot of new features and is generally designed to be more extensible. Um, we've worked, some of the features we've started working on, and I'll talk about this again a little bit later, is uh, to test bridges to make sure that we're not handing out ones that don't work. We're also working on features for bridge operators to make sure that they can check to see if their bridge is up and uh, put their bridge back up if it's gone down. Um, and we're also working on a feedback loop with uh, third-party censorship measurement systems like UNI or some other academic ones to make sure that we're learning about the types of censorship that are happening and aware of which bridges are reachable in which places. As a more meta thing, we've also been working on automated monitoring of services. So making sure that RDSYS or BridgeDB or GetTor itself is up and running. And over the last year, this has already helped us respond very quickly to outages and just improve our reliability in general. Moving on to pluggable transports, uh, we've made a lot of progress on our new pluggable transport Snowflake, which uses very lightweight one-hop volunteer proxies to uh, connect users with the Snowflake bridge um, and tunnels tour traffic over a peer-to-peer -peer WebRTC connection. When the year started, Snowflake wasn't in a very useful place, but now it provides a reasonably comfortable browsing experience. And this is in large part thanks to incorporating TurboTunnel. Um, and also the influx of uh, proxies that we've added. Um, so over the last year, we've added the ability to run a Snowflake proxy easily using a web extension. And we've also been working on something available soon, an Android proxy app to allow users to volunteer bandwidth from their phone. Um, you can see here the number of Snowflake proxies we currently have. We've been sitting pretty stably at around 6,000 proxies in the last six months which is great. It's good to be in a stable position with a lot of uh, capacity. And we're excited to see how much new capacity we can add in the next year. So some more things that we're excited about over the next year. 
Um, one of the main usability enhancements that we are excited to work on is to make Tor Browser smarter and reduce the amount of work that a user has to do in figuring out what types of censorship they face and how to circumvent it. We're also working on, with our new research distribution system, a uh, reputation-based system to reduce the ability of sensors to discover and block all of our bridges and make it so that users are left with bridges that have been, have remained um, kept secret from sensors um, using reputation and looking at uh, which bridges are blocked after which users uh, find out about them. We're also hoping to make Snowflake more stable to increase the usability of it, its throughput, and its reliability. And we're excited about adding new distribution channels to get Tor. Um, so in addition to email, we're hoping to expand into more commonly used uh, instant messaging systems and distribute mobile versions of Tor Browser in this way. So I'm going to end also in another call and thank you to volunteers. There are a lot of different ways to volunteer for the anti-censorship team, and we love to have new volunteers join our community. Uh, depending on what resources you have available or what you like to do, you can set up relays, bridges, and snowflakes. You can help us write code. Most of our projects are in Go and Python. And you can also help us stay aware of censorship events by documenting and analyzing it. And so the best way to get started is to join our IRC meetings, and I've left a link to a Rise Up pad as well. So thank you. Uh, next up is Nick, who is going to talk about Core Tour.